an average drug takes about 10 to 15 years to be developed from discovery all the way to the market. And that is too long. We need to help patients today. Every day that it takes us longer to get there, somebody is not doing as well and their family suffering, they're suffering. Our aim is to deliver safe, effective, high quality medicines to our patients around the globe. A very key aspect of what we do is to cut down the time from drug discovery and development to manufacturing. We really want to deliver more innovative medicines for our patients as fast as we possibly can. Patients are waiting. So um, it is really our responsibility um, to actually think about how we leverage in this new technology to help us do things faster. AVI was formed in 2013. We've developed about 75 different indications that we can treat, from cancer to looking at immunological diseases, from psoriasis to inflammatory bowel disease, to looking at eye care, looking at aesthetics with migraines and neuropsychiatric diseases. So AVI is using AI and machine learning to accelerate drug discovery at multiple levels. So first of all, we have the technology now to be able to read people's DNA. So in a laboratory like this, we can read their, their DNA and come up with what's their blueprint. With that information, and there's lots of information, you don't have to figure out how to connect it from healthcare down to the molecular point of disease and everything in between that. So what Avi is doing is integrating this data and gluing those pieces together so we can do it better, smarter, faster. Let me give you an example of where AI is making a difference for Avi today. So let's imagine now that uh, we're looking for a new drug that's a monoclonal antibody, which means it's a protein that binds to another protein. So first of all, we had to figure out whether or not we could design a big molecule to attack a big molecule and to get it to work. So to accelerate that, we actually used AI and machine learning to say, oh, this design right here will go in and fit. But then we had a problem because then it was too viscous, which means it's too thick to go through the syringe. So what did we do? We ran AI and machine learning again. And we said, well, how could we change that protein so that it would still be effective, but not be so thick? And then we thought, okay, well, what would be the best way of using this drug now we have a drug that we can put in in the right concentration that works, that's not too thick. And we know it's gonna work because we've calculated ahead of time where it's gonna bind on the other protein. All of that was done using computers and machine learning. So those things were unimaginable uh, as recently as 10 years ago. It used to be all of that was done by trial and error. It's now helping us understand things that we couldn't see before or putting things together in a way that we hadn't thought of before. It's accelerating what we do, fundamentally changed my job, which has actually made it a lot more fun. The purpose of clinical trials is to uh, evaluate the safety and efficacy and potentially even the effectiveness of this uh, new medicine that we're developing. So uh, when patients actually suffer with autoimmune disease, that means their immune system actually mistakenly attacking their body, uh, healthy tissues and, and uh, cells, and leading to potentially the chronic inflammation and also damaging to the organs. Some patient like uh, psoriasis or atopic dermatitis, these patients um, suffer, uh, we call the uh, chronic inflammation of the skin. They will have very itchy and inflamed uh, red skin and these patients could be like scratching throughout the day and also sometimes scratching 20, 30 times per hour at night. So they don't sleep well at all. In the clinical trials for atopic dermatitis, we have these sensors that you can actually uh, let patients wear on their hand and that will quantify actual the scratch uh, frequency at night by offering these type of at-home monitoring technology, we can potentially expand the trial access for a lot of patients that traditionally may not be able to come to the trial site to participate in trials. Now, by expansion, we could potentially recruit uh, more patients faster. It is really our responsibility to actually think about how we leveraging this new technology to help us do things faster.
Our investments in Factory of the Future are designed to assist our technicians to use that data faster. For example, we would have millions of input that historically would have taken us weeks and weeks to assess and then use that data to correct. Now, we can do that in seconds. We can make online real-time changes to ensure we always make safe and effective products. We're moving away from conventional methods. We're employing innovation. Robotics and automated systems can take over repetitive manual tasks, such as sorting and even quality inspections, leading to faster production cycles, increased safety and significantly reduced human error. This not only helps to improve both efficiency and precision in the production of highly regulated pharmaceutical products, but also creates more rewarding careers for our people. There's nothing more motivating thinking our end product can truly help patients um, to improve the quality of their life. And by using these technologies, you now um, I don't have to wait till the patient comes to the site to see them. I can have more comprehensive view about their overall health and whether the drug is actually working. Almost every scientist here has a family member with these diseases. And this is about treating our family also. And when we get up in the morning, that's why we do this. It's, it's for all patients, including our own. That motivates all of us. I can't think of a better job 